Hey everyone, this is going to be kind of a quick tutorial, but uh, I think it's very useful as a lot of people probably from the StarCraft 1 world don't really uh, understand how the triggers how, how the triggers have changed in the StarCraft 2 and WarCraft 3 world where uh, it's a lot more advanced, but it's not as... Uh, I guess it's not as straightforward, but um, once you know it, it totally makes sense. And so this is uh, going to be kind of like a zombie attack kind of map if anyone played them in Warcraft 3 where you'd, you and your teammates w would uh, walk around together and then AI uh, controlled or computer controlled zombies would come and attack you. And I'm going to be using Zerglings for this example. So when I go in game, you can see that three waves have spawned from their little spots. And the wave closest to me went for me and these two waves went for my buddy here, player two. And uh, we're doing okay. I think he's going to die pretty soon, though. And uh, oops. And the important thing to note is that uh, it spawns more waves, and they keep getting ordered. And uh, when they finished with him, they all went and attacked me. And when they're done with me, while well, the game would be over, I guess, at this point. So it doesn't really matter. But um, you can see that when he respawns, when the hero respawns here, he's going to uh, he's going to come back. I mean, they're going to come back and attack him. Hopefully soon. Yeah, there we go. So, um, why don't we get this started right away? So let's go ahead and make a new map. And um, let's see, it's kind of slow after uh, running Fraps and StarCraft 2 and the editor at the same time. Okay, so new map. Um, so one thing you want to do now because we have the full release version of the editor is click on custom and then click add standard, check off these two and move story up to the top and that way um, if you didn't move story up the data editor uh, wouldn't see all the campaign units for some reason and I think that'll probably be fixed in a patch soon so it doesn't matter really later on when people are watching this like a month from now so you press OK and 64 let's make it 80 by 80 just so it's a little bit bigger and Agria is fine and press OK OK I zoom out a bit using the wheel um, so uh, just to clarify some things, because I know I've gotten a lot more, a lot of more uh, views since the release came out. Um, the reason I have the map bound and the camera bound here is under view, show terrain, show bounds. Uh, another good thing to have is show lighting game. And also under preferences, um, have your video settings on high at least. Or uncheck that and set it to high or ultra. Um, those are just good things to have. Anyways, I don't want to waste too much time on uh, unrelated things here. So uh, let's say we have, I'm just going to set up two players. So let's say we have a second uh, user player. Okay. And press U to go to units. Oh, I'm already on units. And go to player one. And let's switch over to hero. And I'm on tree view, by the way, because uh, a lot of them don't have icons, the campaign stuff. Uh, and let's switch to Terran. And let's make a Jim Rayner sniper for player one. And let's make a... Uh, what was that other useless hero? Uh, Rory Swan for player two down here. And then let's uh, hit P to go to points. Click on this one if it isn't already. And we're just going to make the spawning points for the uh, Zerglings where they're going to come. And in your, if you're making, if you're actually going to use this for some sort of zombie map, uh, you'd want to place these points relatively sp like spaced well around the map because our trigger is going to order the Zerglings to attack the closest enemy unit to them. So you'd want to have like one here, one here, and one here if you had some huge like city map. So that if players are hiding and camping here and then one guy's over here, not all the Zerglings are going to come from here and go straight for these guys. You'd want some to kind of straggle off and go for that random guy. So let me just control Z, Z on those things. Um, I'm going to place one spawn point here and one spawn point here. So we should see point one Zerglings go towards Jim Rayner. And we should see these guys go to, towards a uh, lame swan guy. Um, and okay, so I think that's all we need here. Um, yeah, so let's, let's save this. Okay, so we're pretty much uh, done with this part. So let's go straight to data. And the first thing we want to do is just find uh, uh, Raynor. And the reason we're doing this, and the sniper version is the one I placed, I'm pretty sure. And the reason I'm going here is just to set uh, his attributes to be heroic. And if your editor doesn't look similar to mine here, check that your fields are the same as mine here because I tend to find that what I have checked right now is the best way to see the editor. 
and this thing checked here will show the object explorer for your whatever data you're clicking on anyway so you got your heroic on here just it's something to do with our trigger that separates him from other units I mean from not him separates heroes from other units um, and same with Rory search for Rory and I'm under the units tab by the way search for Rory and let's scroll down for Rory and double click attributes and set him to heroic as well okay and that's all we need to do with the data editor and let's go straight to triggers so uh, we want to still leave this trigger in here and just delete all the actions that it does and so the event is when the map starts when the map is loading we want to control W actions here um, we want to set, I'm just going to set the game speed to normal uh, set game speed to normal so it makes the uh, tutorial go a bit better um, but we're going to set like some things like the camera panning and visibility of, for the entire map you probably want, don't want to do the visibility part but it, uh, I'm just going to show how to do it anyway and then so we're going to in this melee init trigger we're not going to do any sort of spawning um, but we're going to make another trigger after that's going to do the spawning every whatever 45 seconds and then make that do another trigger that orders the units every so often. So I'll show how to do this all, but basically it's when I have one trigger that's going off every so often creating the units, and then we're going to have another trigger going off every so often that's ordering them to attack move to your hero's position so they so they don't just stand there and do nothing. Um, so let's get back to this. So control W again. Um, P, 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 player group. So we're going to pick each player in, all, in player group, and we're going to change all players to be active players. Um, so if player one and two are playing, it'll just it'll only go through player one and two, and won't waste time on all the other uh, players that aren't there. So Control W inside this one, and go down to V visibility, and we're going to create a revealer uh, for player. And instead of player one, we're going to change it to player group picked player. So this way, it'll go through each player and do this, and within area uh, function entire map. So you might not want to do this for your zombie map or whatever, but uh, I'm doing it just for the tutorial to see that everything's working. Um, and w one thing else we want to do for all the players that are playing is we want to pan their camera. So I press Control W again, camera, uh, pan camera. And we want to pan the camera for player, so change player 1 to picked player again. P, picked player there. And to, instead of center of triggering region, we want to go click on the leftmost bracket there and change it to unit position of unit position of and let's just click on random unit from unit group random uh, living unit from and change unit group to function units in region matching condition any units in the entire map owned by player and change that to function and I'll explain this in a second picked player matching blah 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 that's good you could you could click this and make heroic required but uh, I'm going to leave it like that because you don't have any more units. And with at most any amount over zero seconds, that's fine. Zero deceleration. So what it's going to do is for each player that this, this loop is going to go through. So say it starts, pick each player in active players. Say active players returns one and two. So it's going to go to player one first, create a visibility for them across the entire map. And then for player one, it's also going to pan the camera to a random unit owned by player one um, in the entire map and since we only have one unit it's just gonna pick our hero guy right here if you had more units um, well you probably could just uh, well you could probably still use this because it just needs to pick one random unit and pan the camera to it um, that's generally a good way I mean I know I have the guy directly placed here so you could just do position of and then go to value and just click Jim Rayner but because I'm looping through, to save myself time here, it's just going to go nicely and find it for each player. So it's going to find a random living unit for player 2 when it's setting player 2's camera, and so on. And I hope that makes sense, but it's just a really efficient way of panning the camera for each player without having to do like 8 different actions for each player. So we're basically done with camera and visibility now, and we can move on to uh, alliances. So player, I press Control w player, set alliance. And this is outside of the loop. You, you can see I placed it up here, not in, not inside. Um, so I want to make player one and two. Oh, it's already done for me. Nice. 